Yo, what's up? It's Nick Coletti, and I'm going in the DMs with Mass Gorilla. I'm 23. I'm from Pittsburgh, PA, Pennsylvania, and I do comedy. I do music. Um, I quilt. <laughs> now I, uh, yeah, I, I'd say just comedy mainly, but I, I like music a lot too. I like to mix, produce, work on shit. But um, high school was it was all right. I. Uh, I don't know, I mean, I was definitely like kind of a weirder kid, kind of did my own thing, so I have to deal with like all the bullshit that comes with that. But it was, I mean, it was cool. I had like a couple close friends. Um, yeah, it was like, it was whatever. I hated it, fucking hated it so much. Did you play sports or anything? Were you in any clubs? Yeah, I did uh, rowing, which was really awesome actually, because we just got like, we got to go like on the river every day and just like, I don't know. And anytime that we had like an away meet, everyone would just like, fuck. <laughs> 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 yeah, like there was always just like people like hooking up and shit. It was like kind of hilarious, but. Were you like staying in hotels or something? Yeah. Yeah, it was funny as hell. Those were like the good, good times. So were you like in on that action? Like, nah. No. I wish I was honestly, but nah. Yeah, I like definitely was a class clown just because focusing was like really hard for me and like I just wasn't a good student. So I would get bored in class and just like fuck around and try to make people laugh and um, I don't know, try to like do whatever I could besides, you know, work or do like any sort of work <laughs> because I just fucking hated it so much. And, and like anytime I did try, I would just like get it wrong or like. So just like fuck it, I don't just like I just gave up really early with school. Um, do you have any like siblings or? Yeah, I have a sister. Was she like similar personality <laughs> or was she more? It seems like I want to guess she was maybe like good in school. Like yeah, in yeah, she got like really good grades. She went to Miami for medicine. Wow. Um, she worked at like a lab at Pitt. Uh, it's like a college in Pittsburgh. It's a they have a really good medical program, but yeah, she's totally different than me. She's like quiet. She likes to read. She like sits in her bed and watches Netflix. And I'm just like fucking annoying. So uh, my dad is like a consulting thing manager. I don't really know what he does. He like he does. He's like a businessman. And then my mom's a nurse. So pretty normal working parents. Um, my dad was in the Navy. They met in high school, so. So when you were kind of like fucking up in high school and being a class clown, we were, was like your Navy dad like bummed on you? And yeah, oh yeah, they were super strict, like totally strict. Like no, no bullshit. I didn't even think about doing any of the shit that I do now at that time. Just because I knew I would like it in so much trouble, it wasn't even worth it. <laughs> But yeah, like smoking, I'd never did any of that sh shit. Drinking, hell no. I'd, I'd be in fu so much fucking shit if I did any of that shit. When was the first time that you smoked? Um, Probably like 10th grade. I tried it with my, f my roommate actually when we were kids and it was fucking awesome. <laughs> it was cool. And then I had never had been, I had never been like a habitual smoker, but I would do it here and there, and then now I guess I'm more of like a everyday. -er. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think they were too pressed on me going to college because they they could tell that I wasn't, I mean, into it like at all. But I, and the I did show interest in like this one college. It was like a music production college. I wanted to go for like engineering. One of my buddies was going to, but I didn't get accepted. I like I applied and I got. Uh, denied or whatever. So I was just like, fuck it, whatever. So I went to like this film program in Pittsburgh, but they were, they were pretty supportive. Um, I just worked at like a car dealership. Um, I washed dishes and like, that was it. I mean, 
they wanted me to have a job, but they were just like, yeah, I mean, college would have just been a huge waste of money for me, honestly. And I'm, I'm really glad, like, that I didn't do that because I feel like a lot of kids are, like, in debt. At least, like, really far in debt, but if that matters, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it matters to me. I don't want to be in fucking debt. Like, a year and a half, um, they didn't really... It was more, like, technical stuff, like, film theory, like, how to, like, make a movie, which is, like, that's all, like, essential stuff to know, but I felt like I kind of wanted to do, like, my own thing and, like, have my own way of doing it, so... I used to skip class, like, all the time and, like, hang out with this chick. <laughs> or, like, just, like, yeah, towards the end of it, I just kind of said, like, fuck it up. Like, there was, like, a lighting class and, like, I mean, that, that, all that shit is, like, essential. Like, I'm not saying that's shit, that, but, like, for me, I was just, like, I wanted to, like, actually go make shit. And they, like, I don't think we made, I think I made, like, one project the whole time I was there. So I was just, like, fuck it. And then I started making vines. Okay, so, do you remember the first time that you found the Vine app? Yeah, my my homie Adam actually back home, Adam Bussy, love you dude, he showed it to me and I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, I didn't get it at all. And then, uh, the hype kind of died down I was like, alright, I'm gonna check this out. So I, I was at work, I worked at the car dealership and I like downloaded it and made the first one and I still didn't really get it. And then I just kind of got hooked on it because it was, like, so funny to me making these little, like, vignettes of just, like, random shit. Like, you could just do something here, like, go somewhere else, blah, blah, blah. Like, I just thought it was so novel. So I, like, from that point on, I was just making vines, like, nonstop. So when you started, how many views were you getting on a vine? Not a whole lot. I'd probably, like, um... Definitely a below 10,000 loops or whatever. Probably even below like 5,000 loops. But I was telling jokes on Twitter, so I would just tweet my vines. So then people would like go from my Twitter to my vine shit. Uh, definitely Evan Breen, who was like, oh my God. <laughs> I, I knew I wanted to be friends with Evan so fucking bad. Like I was like, dude, I have to be friends with this kid. And yeah, I mean, we are friends now. So that that's, I mean. It all worked out. But yeah, he was like, oh my God, I would die at his shit. Like, <laughs> just thinking about it, man, that shit was hilarious. Like, he definitely inspired me to just, like, do, you know, like, whatever. Like, I don't know. And the funniest part about Evan is, like, you'll tell him about the vines, and you're like, dude, it's funny because this reason. He's like, oh, I didn't even know. Like, he's so, um, uh, he's like the type of person who's hilarious, but he doesn't really like think he's that funny. Mm -hmm. And like, he'll just, he's just like, yeah. Evan was definitely, and then Cody Ko too. Cody Ko also was like a big inspiration too. To like, go, cause I think he was one of the first people who kind of like fucked with me. I remember he had like 125,000 followers or some shit. And I was like, what the fuck? And so then some, how many at that point did you have? Oh, I had to have at least, I had, probably like, Less than 10,000 or something. Maybe maybe more. But some, I was at like a thing and someone was like, dude, Cody Co just like revined you. Or like, I was like, what? No way. <laughs> and then like, yeah. Then I was just like, fuck it. All right, I'm, I'm doing this shit. I, I mean, I always thought, <laughs> those people, I always just thought they were like super corny and whatever. But like, yeah, I mean, like we definitely had like a niche kind of like underground sort of comedy sort of like thing. Not really like, as marketable as the other people who were just like, I mean, all those people are like doing brand, crazy brand deals and shit. We were just kind of do it like for fun, but. There's the one where I put the hot dog in the fan, which like kind of like took me up to like a level. And then I think the what the fuck is up Kyle one that, or the sud dude one, honestly. I mean, the sud dude one is like, uh, that was like a, I think, Getter's manager, I think, made like a video and put it on Facebook. That's how that blew up. Like he, someone made like a combination video of like me and Tanner doing like, so dude, like, and then that, that blew up. But I think what the fuck is up Kyle and the hot dog vine. 
I don't know, but I mean, someone else would say something totally different probably, but for me at least, that's what I think. I was honestly traveling a lot with Tan with Getter and doing stuff like going to shows with him because there was like a lot of people wanted to see us together. So we were like going to shows. Um, yeah, like doing like Vine hit us up. We did that thing in Miami. They like took us down there for like uh, the music conf conference thing. And that was super dope. We got to ride jet skis and shit. I met Getter in LA my first time I was here. I was uh, out here to do improv class um, at the Groundlings actually. So I actually only went to like two classes cause I didn't go to the rest of them to hang out with Tanner, Getter. So he, I think I hit him up. I was like, hey, I'm in LA, blah, blah, blah. He texted me back. He picked me up one day, we went, got, uh, umami burger and then we just kicked it and we like became good friends like I mean you can you can tell pretty quickly when you you like feel comfortable around someone like as a friend so we just started kicking it um, a couple months passed I decided to move out to LA and then I was sleeping on his couch for like a week I was like yo can I just kick it with you until I get my bearings and shit like I was going to find a job, blah, blah, blah. And then I honestly, or I was just like, dude, could I, because it wasn't working out with him and his old roommate. So his old roommate left and then I just like took his place and moved in and then the rest is history. So Shred Collective was like Tanner, it's, yeah, it was more Tanner's like brainchild of just like, you know, another um, uh, sort of just like a group, like a creative group. Uh, videos, like comedy stuff, um, hip-hop stuff, like very heavily um, geared towards like music and the music scene. And um, yeah, and now he's still doing all that. I, I, uh, we used to live together, and then I moved out. And now I, I, I kind of just wanted to do my own thing, honestly, and like, um, it was it was kind of hard to like tell him that I know that he was probably you know hurt by that or just maybe confused as to why I didn't want to join it but um yeah I mean hopefully there's no hard feelings there but I'm more of just like you know kind of just want to do my own thing type of person so but so at that point you guys were tra like traveling together mm -hmm. and you were yeah, I was like opening for him. We did the tour, the What the Frick tour. So I was like opening right before him. I would go and do like my little set thing. And like, it was more of like an EDM tour, but I would just play straight like hip hop bangers that I just like love. Just like old shit that they used to play at like our high school dances and stuff, like Young Jock and just like shit that I knew the ki kids would just go stupid to. And, and they did like. I'd play like Yeah by Usher and everyone, like just shit everyone knew just to get everyone hyped up. And then he would come out and just like fucking go ham. Like his live shows are so fucking fun to watch. So why weren't, it seems like you being a DJ might have been an interesting like side path to take mm -hmm. in comedy. Why didn't you want to pursue being a DJ? Um, I think as a kid, I always wanted to be a DJ. And I think I definitely have done what I would want to do as a DJ. I don't think uh, I would be too good at like producing my own tracks and like you know out there like grinding it out as like a real like uh these dudes who'd like just work their ass off like I don't think I could do that um I was just honestly it was more of like a comedy musical comedy set because I would like put fart noises in the the set and like other like hot pocket commercial I would open with like the audio from a hot pocket commercial this is like stupid shit like just trying to make people laugh so yeah I mean I don't know if I could really dedicate myself to being a DJ and like, dude, they travel so much and like they're up at like, cause like think about it, you go on at like 12 or one, you play like an hour, 45 minute show, then you're done. Then you, you have to like rage with whoever after, like everyone's like, yeah, let's go back to the and just get fucked up. So like when it's all said and done, like it's like 4 a.m. or 3, 4, 5 a.m. So. And we were doing that like every night. 
but yeah, I just, I mean, I don't think I have the, the mind for that. But yeah, Tanner taught me pretty much everything like that I knew as far as like DJing goes and like, um, there's a lot of like tricks and just like little shit that you have to like just get really good at. And yeah, I mean, I'm like naturally musical, I guess. So I kind of had a knack for it and I would just like put my own spin on shit and like put the fart noises in there and like, I don't know, just like stupid shit that I thought was funny. At that point I was like, all right, I want to like move on from this anyway. So I was like, okay, it's not the worst thing that's going to happen. Like, but I was, but then like, I was like, fuck, like, what am I going to do? Like, cause everyone was transitioning to YouTube and like, that shit's cool. But like, I'm not really like, um, the type of person who could just like vlog all the time. And then like, I would get so burnt out on that shit. So I didn't want to do that. And then like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm still like, I'm only 23 still. So I'm still trying to figure everything out. Young turd. Uh, yeah, that was like my rap alias when I was younger, probably like 19, 18, 19. Um, that's when I first started like really making music for like SoundCloud and shit and like trying to get my name out there. And I try, I picked young turd just cause my mom would always call me a turd when I was little because I was just annoying and always getting in trouble. So I just, uh, yeah, I just made young. And then I was always like, uh, it's just like so stupid that maybe it'll be, it'll like catch on. But yeah, I like was making hella music probably just as, uh, often as I was making vines. So I was trying to like make music with my cousins and like anybody who was really down, honestly. And yeah, I kind of gave that all up to like pursue Nick Coletti, whatever that is. Well, it was my name, and now it's like this whole... Nick Coletti was my name. And it still is my name. But it, now I think it's more of like a brand, I guess, like a comedy brand. But like that whole thing just like fucking confuses the shit out of me. Because especially out here is like you just have all these different people telling you like all this different shit and like what they think you should be doing and shit. So now it's just like, I don't know. I just love making people laugh, like that's it. No matter how I can, like any way I can. If I was fucking mute or like, I'd figure out a way to like make people laugh. Like, what is it about that, that? It's just like a high. Like when I see people laugh really hard at some shit that I did, it just makes me feel so good. Cause it's like, if they're having a bad day, like I know what that's like to just be like fucking pissed and like, or just like down in the dumps. And then those little moments that like, make you forget about that shit are like so nice. So if I could, anytime that I have the opportunity to do that for someone, I like take full advantage of it. And I'll like look like the biggest dumbass to like make someone laugh. Like I'll just like go like, I mean, within like, like I'm not like, like Supreme Patty, like that, that dude's wild. Like he does some crazy shit. Like I don't think like that kind of shit, but like, I don't know. Well, I never, I always just visualize and like have envisioned myself being like this bigger than like, you know, these things or like categories that people put me in like, oh, he's a viner. He's like an Instagram comedian. Like, I want to say like, fuck all that shit. And like, I want to be like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I want to be like Nick Coletti, the fucking like world famous comedian, like sold out, like world tour, like cover of like crazy like time like funniest man in the world like i tell people that shit and they fucking laugh dude like but that's how i know i'm like fuck yeah like no one believes in me i'm gonna fucking do this shit and then like that's just it like even like living here like so many people would be like no nah, it's never gonna work out and like i'm still fucking here so i mean at this point like yeah i mean i don't want to be a youtuber i don't want to be a fucking I mean, I'm thankful for all this shit and like the, like Vine obviously gave me a platform and like took me to where I want, want to be right now. But yeah, I don't think I want to be like an internet comedian or like, you know, all the shit that people think of me now. I want people to be like, oh, that's Nicoletti. Like, I, like 
bigger than Chappelle, like bigger than like my favorite comedians. Like that's what I want to be. So I did my first stand-up set recently about a month ago. That was my first one ever um, that I was, I mean, I have did an open mic one time at a diner and it was all right. Like I just read some jokes off my phone and shit and made a couple of people laugh. I like said like, I don't live at home anymore, which sucks because I can't hear my parents having sex and like someone chuckled and I was like, whatever. But then I, uh, <laughs> but then I, um, so I did the show and it was dope. I was really nervous, but the dude who set it up like really did a good job of getting us like in a good headspace to, uh, you know, perform. And I was really thankful for that. And I ended up, I didn't, uh, I thought I was just going to choke and like fuck the whole thing up, but I think I did pretty good. And uh, it was like, it's crazy because I was, I went in there with like the, th I was like, I'm going to kill it. Everyone's going to laugh at fucking everything I said, but it actually is hard to like get people to laugh sometimes. Like it's not, no one's going to like laugh because, for like a pity laugh. Like people are just going to be like, ah, like you really have to like make them laugh. So I was like, all right, okay. So I, I worked pretty hard on this set, like. Yeah, so like, how'd you put together the material? So, yeah, I was like, just kind of like spitballing with some ideas and um, just walking around, like pacing around in the backyard. And I think I had smoked and thought of a couple funny things, but yeah, like a, a huge part of it is like, just getting over the, you know, critical self being critical of yourself like because you're gonna think that everything you think is stupid and then you just have to be like fuck it whatever because like most of the shit that you think is funny other people think is funny too so it's like a battle with yourself honestly you just have to like tell yourself to like shut up and just do it that's like the i think that's the biggest step for anything honestly is just like fuck it like why not so yeah i had to like you know, get, I was so nervous. I like threw up before the show and everything. Like, I was just like, fuck, what if I like bomb and no one laughs? But yeah, I mean, performing live is, it's tough. It's a lot scarier than, I think we make it a lot scarier though than it is. So um, now that you've done it twice, are you more comfortable with it or is it still? I it take like a hundred times. I think. Yeah, I think I have a. Be I feel better about it now. Um, I think doing the show gave me like the, the confidence that I needed to now be like, okay, like I feel comfortable on stage. I can talk to people. I might be a little nervous, but that's whatever. Like I can deal with that. Um, and just like remembering why I'm there, which is like to make people laugh. Like I'm like supposed to look like an ass, like a like an idiot, like just like a joker, like. If you go up there and you're like, yeah, so I just like fucking bought a Bentley and I fucked like this really hot chick. Like no one's going to fucking laugh at you. Like people want to laugh at like just like a jackass, which is like what I basically am. So. Who are some of your favorite um, comedians out right now, I guess? I love Chappelle. He's like my favorite just because he's so like real and just blunt and like that's kind of like my style of comedy I would say as well is just kind of like observing like life and how funny life is and how funny people are and like just like funny situations that I put myself in and then like um I like the random kind of shit too that's that's kind of like just who I kind of am as like a person I love Louis CK I know he's like a masturbator um but I still fucking love him and think he's hilarious and yeah that whole thing i don't really know how i feel about that whole thing either because i don't know there's like so so many levels to that that could be taken either way but i think he's he was one of my first comedians that i like literally i think was like out of breath laughing like i, I was at my friend's house for a sleepover and we were watching and i i was dying like the hardest i've ever laughed like and i i remember that it's so vividly because it was like literally like I've never laughed like that before in my life. To make the money. So making money for me is like, it's all over the place. Like I do the cameo thing, which is like these little videos 
So, like, someone will be like, hey, dude, tell my friend happy birthday, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yo, what's up, Trevor? Dude, happy 15th birthday, sauce. Like, that shit, which is, like, cool. I get to interact with my fans, and I get to make some money. Like, that that pays the bills, honestly. It's, like, I kind of have to exploit myself, but whatever. And then, like, I'll do, like, a random brand deal every once in a while. Like, we did one for SeatGeek. And they were just like, hey, just make like a video. We're gonna, we, they sent us to a basketball game for free. We got like good seats and we just had to like make a video of us like, ah, ah, like stupid shit, but it's funny. Yeah, it's like basically just use my social media to make money. And uh, yeah, I don't have to work like a nine to five, which is like my biggest thing that I don't wanna do. So yeah, just honestly like social media shit. That's how I make money right now. I want to get paid to do like a movie or some shit, but in time. Um, Real Bros was really cool. Like Jimmy reached out to me and Tanner. He was like, yo, I got the script. I basically want to make this show like, you know, Real Husbands of Hollywood or all those like reality shows or whatever. And then, yeah, he was like Real Bros of Semi Valley, just like dudes who wear like monster fitteds and like smoke vapes and like have big ass like jacked up trucks and shit. So, yeah, it was, I mean, it was a really funny concept and I thought it was hilarious. I was actually really nervous. I remember the first day of shooting, I like fucked up the location. So I like had to get there. Like I was like, fuck dude, I'm so sorry. And then I got there and I like didn't know my lines and I was just like, fuck, like tr awkwardly trying to like pretend like I remembered them and like, wait, can I just look at them still? And like, yeah, I mean. That shit never get, goes away, like, being nervous, but, yeah, Jimmy just reached out to us, we did the thing, and there's, like, so many more people than I thought are fans of it, like, they always bring that shit up, and I was like, damn, I didn't know people really even knew about it that much, but I guess they do. So are you guys shooting another season? Yeah, we're gonna do season two, and, like, shooting it in June, I think. Then, the Super School show, me and, me and Evan, mm -hmm. that was honestly so fun to shoot, because I got, I just got to spend so much close time with Evan like he's so fucking funny just observing him but yeah that that was honestly really a lot of fun for me to act like that I love acting like it, it's really fun when you like pull off the character in the right in the right way and yeah it was like my, one of my first real like there was like a set and like P, like PAs and all that shit like camera people there's like lunch and like craft services and all that shit and that, that always feels good to be involved with that shit, too, because you're like, I'm actually doing some shit. It's, like, real. It's not just, like, you know, your homie with, like, his fucking Canon Vixia. No, this is, this is different. <laughs> it's like, hey, man. Um, Can you rage without Heelys and Nos? No. Fuck no. I could not even imagine raging without Heelys or Nos. What's your all-time favorite sauce? Um, Bustalo, obviously. <laughs> uh, yo, what is your fave type of freezer food? Like top four microwavable eatable snacks. Um, top four, probably pot pies. Pot pies are always good. Uh, oh, fuck. Hash browns are good freezer food. Just make them up, like make a little hash brown medley. Some hot sauce in there. Um, mac and cheese. Gogurts. <laughs> Frozen gogurt. <laughs> Frozen gogurt. Um, what's cooler, a wizard shredding a half pipe with his boys or an alien riding a dragon? Um, I would say the wizard shredding the half pipe just because if he, like, his robe comes up then you could probably see his balls <laughs> what's your favorite cereal um i'm a fruit loops guy i love fruit loops i like the milk at the bottom when you're done with the fruit loops it's like uh, really sweet it's like breast milk <laughs> They should fun. sell like Fruit Loop milk. That'd be actually dope. Just pick that up at 7-Eleven. How many times from school have 
How many times have you been suspended from school? Um, twice. I've been suspended twice. One time I was in art class and I put like a Dremel on a piece of wood and they thought, thought I was like trying to start a fire or some shit. It was so stupid. So I got suspended for that. And then I think like I got into some kid like fucking tackled me from behind. And I think I got in trouble for some reason. I was probably like picking on him or some shit, making fun of him. These kids used to, these fucking kids used to like pick on me all the time and then I would pick on them back and then like this kid like jumped me after math class this one time and it was like this huge, he used to wear like tap out shit and like hang out at the mall and like all the shit, I would just like fucking rip on him. I guess he didn't think it was too funny. Where do you see yourself in five years? Hmm. It's a good question. Jimmy Fallon. Sitting in the hot seat with Cardi B. <laughs> Are you going to pursue stand-up comedy as a full career? Your stand-up is really good. I'm dying to see you live. Yes, that's what I want to do. I want to do stand-up. Um... Yeah, I would say so. It's going to be tough. I'm going to have to go through a lot of, you know, the trenches, as they say. But I'm, I'm ready because I love to. I, don't, I couldn't see it any other way. Like, I love making music, and that's always going to be, like, a hobby of mine. But I think comedy for sure is, like, my real, like, that's what I always go back to, is like, comedy. So, yeah, I definitely want, I mean, it kind of really, it is my career kind of right now. Tommy, this is my dog, Tom. Come here, bud. He is a rescue dog that we rescued um, at the pound down the street. I walked in and I was like, I want to get a dog today. I looked around I didn't, and he was actually one of the first dogs I saw when I walked in. He was just kind of sitting there. He's like, Super quiet, minding his own business, and I was like, damn, that's kind of like what I want, so. The lady took him out, told me that he was eight years old. Which at first I was like, damn, that's kind of like too old, but then I was like, fuck it. And he's like the most chill dog ever now, so I'm, I'm glad I made the decision to get him. He's just really sweet. Um, what's your favorite part about having him? Um, just the, like, I don't know, he sleeps in my bed with me, and... It's just nice to have like another living thing with you and sometimes my roommates will be gone or it's thundering outside. <laughs>